if you are handy and unafraid and willing to tinker a little bit, the Koss Sporta Pro headphone with a little modification might just put your other headphones out of business. My other headphones include Grados, uh, several pairs, Sennheisers, several pairs, AKG, several pairs. I have a pair of the really expensive Shure in ears that are ugh. Uh, Audio Technicas. I have their closed back ones for uh, for recording. Twenty two dollars and twenty minutes, and for a little cheap knockabout like workout with them, or you know, go for walks or whatever. Like, I'll be impressed if I ever hear a pair of headphones at this price point that sound equal to these, let alone better. I got to be honest. These modifications are based on, in, in large part, on what are called the Kramer mods on headfi.org. Um, so if you're curious about the uh, genesis of modifying COS headphones, that's a good place to start. I like these better than the Porta Pro because of the convertible headband and because they're black. It just so happens that they also cost a lot less. If I were modifying Porta Pros, and I have, I would do only the half that pertains to the actual uh, driver grill because the headband itself sonically doesn't really have the same deficiencies that the Sporta Pro does. What's bad about Sporta Pros? Well, unlike the Porta Pro, they have this pretty awkward and very uh, acoustically at least poorly designed uh, cup that holds the driver that's a hollowed out channel and a hollowed out dish right behind the driver uh, we're going to do something about that and the driver itself is obscured pretty significantly by the grill uh, we're going to do something about that as well here's my disclaimer I'm not telling you to do this. This is what I've done. I'm very happy with what I've done. And if you also choose to do it of your own accord and are successful, you'll be very, very happy with yourself and with me. If you fail or are unhappy with the results, you'll be very upset with yourself and me. Don't bother. I assume you're a grown person and you made this decision of your own volition and we both have no one to blame but ourselves for our successes and failures with headphone modification. And good luck. So all you'll need to do this is something small to pry a little plastic bit apart. I use basically a a sharpened uh, mini flathead screwdriver, a pair of scissors, and a drill or a dremel. I use a multi-bit, but if you have a regular set of, you know, drill bits, that'll be fine too. It'll just take you longer and some foam. Uh, I ironically use the packing foam from a pair of Grado SR80s <laughs> for this uh, video. Uh, so unpack your headphones, keep the little wire twisty handy that holds the cable because I'll just tell you now, when you pull the drivers off, pull one off and mark it with the twisty because there are no markers, there are no indicators on the drivers as to which is right and left. I just put it right on the left one the minute I pull it off the headband. Okay, so the first thing you do is remove the drivers from the headband. Do not twist the drivers when you do this. You want to pull them straight out, and once you have it apart, you'll see why. You have, uh, if you twist them, you will break them. You want to just pull straight out, and it's, it's not super easy. It's not super hard. I mean, don't be scared. They'll pop out. Like I said, I remove the left one first, I mark it, whatever, the right one's fine, as long as you know which is which when you put it back together. That's what's important. Uh, Set the drivers aside. The first thing that's going to happen is messing with the headband, and it has these two little plastic shields in there. I get a little bit of foam. Uh, Once I think I just wadded up like paper towel or something and filled that little channel. First thing we're going to do is pop off that little guard. Uh, I use a sharpened mini flathead screwdriver. I guess you could probably use, I could use probably a chopstick to do it. It's not very difficult. It pops right off. They come off pretty easily. Set them aside. Get out your drill. We're just trying to remove that cup from behind 
the driver. And, you know, the best way to do it is just removing as much material as you can back there while uh, not affecting the clip that holds the driver in and not making it so the thing will just break. I'm happy with what you'll see me do, which is drilling these four holes there or safety goggles whenever you handle power tools. You should probably be using some kind of a clamp or something to do this and hold the work so it's not you're not pointing a drill bit at your fingers but how you do it's up to you i guess using a little bench clamp would be cool or a but i mean anything you hold these things with can kind of can crush them they're not really you know it's just abs plastic so i just use my fingers whatever i've i haven't gotten her yet and it doesn't take a lot of pressure or a super high powered or high speed drill to get through this plastic so i drill out four holes around that center clip and don't you don't want to touch that center clip at all with a drill bit you want to it, it, you want it to be you know pristine when you put it back together again the next thing is to cut i cut a little piece of foam about the shape of that channel that's going to be enclosed by the cap uh and then we'll probably i don't know if we'll fast forward through the second half of me doing this and you'll hear me saying i don't know maybe we'll fast forward through the second half so i'll be doing the other side of the headband and drilling it out and then i'll be doing some foam stuff and clipping the things back together again and then we'll talk about the drivers grab one of the drivers and the first thing you do is take the foam off. Don't just try and pull the foam off. It is held on at the back of that rim by a bunch of little plastic cleats. So if you just try and pull it off, you'll tear it. Um, no big tragedy, but at the same time, you have to lift up the edge and kind of fold it back in order to get that, the, the foam off without damaging it. And I replace the foam on mine anyway, and we'll, you'll see that happen with just Radio Shack headphone foam, which is just less uh, deadening, actually. It's a lot less dense. It might be less rugged, I mean, but the truth is, I think it sounds better. Next is getting the grills off. I use my sharpened little flathead screwdriver. Uh, there are three gaps around the driver when you're looking at it from the top, and those three gaps are where the little clips are inside. You're gonna wanna put whatever you're using into that little gap and pry it up a little bit. If you're exerting a lot of force, you're doing it wrong and you're probably gonna break your headphones because if you slip, you're gonna put a hole in the diaphragm, which you do not wanna do. You want to just get under the lip of it and, and, and get the clip to let go, any two of those three, and it'll pretty much pop right out in your hand. Once you've got the grill off, put the driver aside. We're done with it for the moment. The grill is the only thing we're going to be modifying. And unlike me, who, as you've already seen me do some freehand drilling, you could do this more safely by just putting that grill down on a piece of scrap lumber and drilling it thus. Drill out these four holes. I don't recommend drilling out more of the grill than this. I have done it. I've done it several times in several different ways. I think this is the best sounding of them. Uh, drilling out the center was semi-catastrophic. I think it muddies the whole picture up. And just having these four holes will really, the bass gets way, I mean, far more coherent, uh, more tuneful. Uh, you get less upper mid-range hash out of the headphones generally because you're reducing the resonator disc effect that the, the grill has over the, over the speaker diaphragm. You can go further just know that I don't, I'm not sure that it's necessary. You might be, I think this is the point of like diminishing returns right here. Drill these four holes, make sure there are no burrs that are going to be touching the driver or, you know, poking out and sticking you in the ear. And then they should clip right back onto the driver pretty easily. You'll see the one little guide tab. You put it in and click, the whole thing just snaps right together like nothing happened. I don't put the foam back on. I like the foam from Radio Shack. I think it sounds better. I think the factory foam is a little bit dulling uh, and is probably more robust, probably will last longer, but I don't think it sounds better. That's for sure. By this, if you've gotten this far, you know how to put the drivers back in the headband. They should clip right in. The only thing to worry about is making sure the cable is facing down when you do it and that you know left from right. 
So uh, once you've got them back together again, they should sound significantly improved from stock. And even in the stock ones, breaking them in does make a difference. I turn mine, you know, up a little bit louder than I normally listen and put them in my sock drawer, you know, while I'm asleep for days. I do it every night for two or three days. Uh, but you start to hear the difference pretty immediately. Uh, the longer you break them in, the better they sound. There's no doubt about it. Congratulations. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Bum 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 b